just take it a bit away from the rail and shoot from there. No, just kidding of course, but very often I see beginners in my local pool hall doing exactly that, because they just have the feeling that it's not possible to shoot from the rail. And if they do, then very often I see that they go into the cue ball with a very steep angle. But first of all, aiming is really difficult and a tiny bit of unintentional side spin will of course make the cue ball curve. So just have a look at the cue ball, what happens if I'm going that steep into the cue ball and just adding a tiny bit of right spin this time. So just let's see what happens. The cue ball starts to curve, it goes towards the free, but then it curves and that way we miss the free ball completely. So let's do it again and show you how you have to do it. So please don't go that steep into the cube, but just have it a tiny bit elevated. You don't want to be perfectly flat, but just a tiny bit elevated. And I very often also notice that people struggle with how they need to bridge if the cue ball is frozen to the rail. So a very common mistake is getting too close to the cue ball with your hand. So you see, I can't really move my cue back and forth a lot and uh, this won't prevent me from being able to strike the cue ball. So you have to try to get as far away from the cue ball as possible. So for example, like this. This is just a normal bridge hand, like I'm having it on the table. I'm just resting my fingers on the rail and trying to get as far away as possible. And you can see that way I can stroke the cue ball nicely, go back and forth. And you can also do something like this, it's a bit more stable. So just form this uh, kind of tripod with your fingers and just use th those two fingers. And with those two fingers you are very stable and nothing wiggles. So for example this. Um, this is also possible, but not ideal in this case. So just experiment and the main message, don't get too close and be able to go flat into the cue ball and that way you can shoot it nicely. And then what you have to do is make sure you're not, in, not adding unintentional side spin because the cue ball will definitely curve if you're adding side spin. So very important. We will learn how to adjust when using side spin, of course, but if it's unintentional, just by accident, you didn't adjust for the side spin and you will miss the shot. So definitely make sure to hit the center of the cue ball. Double check between the cue ball and the object ball where you're aiming and if you're definitely at the center of the cue ball. And just do a couple of pre-strokes and shoot as straight as possible. One thing that also could help is not making a pass before you shoot the ball. So usually when I'm shooting, I'm down, I'm doing my pre-strokes, I pass, go back and forward. But if the cue ball is frozen to the rail, then you could maybe don't do the pass. So this would look something like this. So you're down, you're doing your pre-strokes very smoothly and then just at one point you follow through. Now the big question is, how do you adjust your aiming when using intentional side spin on a shot like this? And by the way, I would never do this if it's not required because you need to get a position for example. Well, we learned that the cue ball will make a curve, but some people were mentioning in the comment section of the previous video that there is also deflection. And yes, that's true. There is always deflection when you're hitting spin. So if I'm adding left spin, the cue ball will deflect a tiny bit to the right and don't hit the center of the short rail. So just have a look. You can see how the cue ball drifted to the right this time, but in our case it's not a big deal because you're not hitting the center of the cue ball because you're hitting the top with left and right spin and you're also a tiny bit elevated. So every time the curve is bigger than the deflection no matter how hard or soft you're hitting. So if you want to play this shot now in with left spin, this means the cue ball will curve to the left. And if the cue ball curves to the left, we of course have to use our ghost ball and aim our free ball to this part of the rail because you're aiming towards here but the cue ball will curve to the left and that way it will hit the right place on the free ball and the free ball goes in. It's the same if you're using right spin. If you're using right spin we have to aim the ghost ball a bit more into this rail because the cue ball will come, will curve and actually don't hit here but again here and send the free ball into the pocket. But enough talking now, let's show you how it actually looks. First of all, I'm going to use left spin. This means I have to aim the free ball into the short rail and I'm hitting pretty firm here.
Did you see how the cue ball reacted because of that left spin where the cue ball ended? Now let's show you the same thing with right spin. So let's set everything up again and use right spin this time and just watch what the cue ball does now. So it's now a high right shot and this time I'm aiming the free ball into the long rail. You see the change where the cue ball path is heading now? So this is really interesting. We actually had left and right spin on the cue ball. So just as a reference, I probably should have done that first. Let's play it with no spin, just a high ball this time. And uh, this time I'm just using the normal ghost ball, aiming to the center of the pocket. And just watch again what the cue ball does now. As you can see, you can really do a lot with the cue ball, even if it's frozen to the rail. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was a remastered version of an older video. A new one is going to follow soon, I promise. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks for watching, guys. And as always, see you at the next lesson. Take care.